1992, <laughs> having prayer services at least once a, uh, once a year. And so we pick different participants every year. So at this time, <clears throat> I'm going to ask if Shane and Mindy Ralston <clears throat> would come, if Fran Kraft would come, if Christy Collins with Katie Hood would come. And what we are going to do is uh, Shane is going to do the prayer, Fran is going to do the quote, Christy and Katie are going to do the scriptures, and so on and so forth, all the way through every single facet of the, who the Bible tells us to pray for. Now, I'm going to ask you to do something because of our love for the Lord Jesus Christ. If you can stand, I'm going to ask you to stand for each one of those prayers, and then you can sit down after the prayer. Okay, would you stand at this time? Go ahead, you stand. I exhort therefore that first of all supplication, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Romans 13, 1. Every person is to be in subjection to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those which exist are established by God. Proverbs 21.1 The king's heart is like channels of water in the hand of the Lord. He turns it wherever he wishes. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Direct my thought, words, and work. Wash away my sins in the immaculate blood of the Lamb, and purge my heart by thy Holy Spirit. Daily train me more and more into the likeness of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Who said that, friend? George Washington, the first U.S. President. All right. Would you agree together with me in prayer for our president and the office of our president right now? Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, we lift up our president to you. Yes. Lord, we know that our president's life and his heart is in your hands. Yes, Lord. So we ask that you would guide and direct his steps. Direct our nation the way that you would have it to go. Father, we pray that you would surround our president with wise counsel. Yes, men, men and women of integrity who would place your agenda and the goods of this nation yes. above their own motives mm -hmm. for that which is right. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We pray that you would give our leader mm -hmm. discernment, mm -hmm. understanding, and knowledge. Yes, Lord. So that our nation may know stability mm -hmm. inside and out. Mm -hmm. We give thanks for our president according to your word because you have set up this office. Yes, Lord. And we thank you for working in and through the leadership of this country so that we might live peaceable lives mm -hmm. in godliness and honesty. And Lord, we, we say a prayer for our future president. Yes, Lord. Yes. Lord, this is a very important year yes, that we as your people, the people of this nation, would let our voices be heard mm -hmm. as we yes. go to the polls and express mm -hmm. our right to vote. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord, according to your word. We pray that you would raise up the right person for this office. Yes, yes Lord. Lord. Let us not do it out of fear or out of anxiety, but out of faith. Yes, Lord. That you will have your way, yes. no matter what. Yes. And we just thank you for that today. We, we pray these things in Jesus' name. Thank you. Lord. Amen. Yeah. 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 You may be seated. <coughs> Dolly, would you look? I have a book on, the, on my desk. I forgot to get it. It's a red, white, and blue. And it's got some paper clips on it. I'd like you to bring that to me, okay? Okay, it needs a flag commander. Do we want to say the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag before we start? Do we have a flag commander here? We do not. Uh, you are? Okay. Uh, I'm not, and I will be. 
<laughs> All right, let's <laughs> get a flag. Um, do you know what? Let's uh, all of our military men, would you stand at this time? Women. Military men. And women. Yeah. Oh, and women. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Let's bring this flag right down to the center, okay? Let's bring this flag right to the center. Men, turn around and face, come on up here and just get right by the side of the flag here. All the men will just stand here, okay? And the rest of the end women, thank you. I'm so sorry, okay? Uh, would everyone stand at this time, okay, and pledge allegiance to the flag? Okay, David, would you lead us, Dave Bartholomew? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, you can. Yes, thank you. Uh, Bruce and. Yeah, let's move it to, all the way to one side or the other. Okay, thank you. All right. Henry Ward Beecher had this to say. Prayer covers the whole of man's life. There's no thought, feeling, yearning, or desire, however low, trifling, or vulgar that we may deem it, which, if it affects our real interest or happiness, we may not lay before God. The whole burden of the whole life of every man may be rolled on to God and not worry him, though it wearies man. This was taken out of our American Orthodox Christian prayer book in the early 1800s. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Almighty God and Creator, you are the Father of all people on this earth. Guide, I pray, all the nations and their leaders in the ways of justice and peace. Protect us from the evils of injustice, prejudice, exploitation, conflict, and war. Help us to put away mistrust, bitterness, and hatred. Teach us to cease the storing and using of implements of war. Lead us to find justice, peace, and freedom. Unite us in the making and creating of the tools of peace against ignorance, poverty, disease, and oppression. Grant that we may grow in harmony and friendship as brothers and sisters created in your image, to your honor, and to your praise. Amen. Amen. And that's what was started and prayed in Washington, D.C. every single time they met. How far have we wandered from that? Amen. At this time, I'm going to ask if David and Rachel Bartholomew, Leonard and Laura Hood, and John and Danny Tucker, if they would come, and they are going to be praying over our Supreme Court. This year, yes. whoever gets elected gets to appoint a new Supreme Court justice. And right now, it's about 4-4. Four, four. That's about as close as it can be. And so this next one will tip the scale either towards God's right or towards the left. Amen? Yeah. Yes. David and Rachel Bartholomew. Come on up here. Would you stand with me, please? Proverbs 8, 14 to 16. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength and by me kings reign Amen. and princes decree justice. By me, princes rule and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. Mm. And in Deuteronomy 16, 18, <laughs> judges and officers shall thou make thee in all thy gates, which the Lord thy God giveth thee throughout thy tribes, and they shall judge the people with judgment. Mm. 2 Samuel 23, 3. The God of Israel said, The rock of Israel spake to me, He that ruleth over men must be just, ruling in the fear of God. Amen. And in Proverbs 11, 1, A false balance is an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. Uh, 
and this is a quote from Woodrow Wilson, the 28th President of the United States of America. It says, there are a good many problems before the American people today and before me as president, but I expect to find a solution to those problems just in the, the proportion that I am faithful in the study of the Word of God. Amen. That was a president. <laughs> Amen. Let us pray. Uh, join us in prayer for the Supreme Court justices. Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bring our Supreme Court justices before you. Knowing that they are appointed of man, we pray that you would influence the selection of each new replacement. Thank you. May they be people who will judge rightly in every manner brought before them. Yes, Lord. As our Supreme Court makes its decisions, we pray that its decrees would be your decrees. Yes. 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 We desire that, by your hand, yes. godly justice would rise up within our justices, yes. and they would make rulings in line with your will. Yes. Yes. We pray they would set a standard of justice and balance with a judicial office at large, not only on a national level, for every adjudicator in our nation. We give thanks to you, dear Father, knowing it is your good pleasure and will to work in every level of government. Amen. 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 You may be seated. <coughs> Franklin Graham is seeking to go to all 50 states and provinces this year and having a prayer at the capitals of every single one of those cities throughout these states. Amen. He had this to say, I believe our nation is in trouble today, probably more than I've seen in my lifetime. We are contending with issues that are causing the very foundation of our country to crumble. Our moral and spiritual roots are eroding. The economy is hurting. Family life is disintegrating, and political forces are at unprecedented odds. There seem to be very few leaders who will take a stand for God and for His Word. The Bible says, when the righteous are in authority, the city rejoices. But when the wicked bear rule, there is going to be trouble. That is from the NIV. It can be tempting to believe that America has reached a point of no return. And I've heard people say that, and I don't believe that, okay? While these factors cause despair, we are reminded in Scripture that with God, nothing is impossible. Amen. No problem is too great for Him. Seasons of distress and uncertainty and hardship call for us and call for faithful, fervent prayer by God's people and remind us of our responsibility to humble ourselves before Almighty God. We cannot expect healing to come to our nation apart from our obedience to pray and to seek God through His Holy Word. I'm going to pray and ask right now for Christians, to, uh, for Glenn and Kathy Herman to come, Linda Glaze to come, and Bruce Matarazzi is going to lead us in prayer. And this is for Christians to vote. Last time there was a presidential election, hardly any Christians came out and voted. <coughs> Look at the person next to you and say, that has to change. Yeah. So you're in the United States of America, you have a right to vote. Vote. Amen. If Christians would vote, we would get godly men and women elected office every single time. But we have to vote, and so they're going to come and share the scriptures with you at this time. Let's see. The first verse will be Luke 16, 13. No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate one and love the other, or else he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. The next verses will be uh, Acts chapter 6, verses 1 through 6. In those days when the number of disciples was increasing, the Hellenistic Jews among them were complained against the Hebraic Jews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. So the twelve gathered all the disciples together and said, It would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word of God in order to wait on tables. Brothers and sisters, choose seven men from among you 
who are known to be full of the spirit and wisdom. We will turn this responsibility over to them and will give our attention to prayer and the ministry of the word. This proposal pleased the whole group. They chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit. Also Philip, Procurius, Nicanor, Timon, Parabenius, and Nicholas from Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They, pre they presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. is from John Wanamaker, an American merchant and U.S. Postmaster General. <clears throat> o Lord, thou hast told us how to pray. Help us to shut the door, shutting out the world and the enemy, and any fear or doubt which spoils prayer. May there be no distance between our souls and thee. Amen. What a quote. What a quote. Thank you. <clears throat> right, let's pray together. Dear Father, we do not take lightly what you have done in our nation. We appreciate not only the right, but the privilege we have to vote. We pray that we, as well as others, will use that privilege wisely, seeking your will, Lord, as we consider the qualifications for whom we are to vote. We pray for our Christian family, the body of Christ, that they would see the right to vote as a gift, Lord, from your hand, and yes. avail themselves of this opportunity. Yes, Lord. May there arise such a force of righteousness in our electoral system that it would affect every realm and level of government yes. in our nation. Yes. We pray in Jesus' name that the powers that would be would gain a profound respect not only for the political strength of the Christian com community, but for our spiritual influence in our nation as well. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Bruce. Thank you so much. You know, Kathy's quote said, you cannot serve God and money. I don't know if you remember last time we voted, they said, it's the economy, stupid. Yeah. No, we're stupid if we don't vote morality. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We're stupid if we don't vote God. That's what makes us stupid. Okay. Right. The Bible says only a fool would say there is no God. Mm -hmm. So we are going to vote godly principles, right? Yes, yeah. right. Amen. Amen. Okay. At this time, I'm going to ask our veterans would come, Kevin and Tracy Freeman, uh, Dana and Dennis Lacheco, and Irv Rock, if you would come at this time. It was so great to see so many veterans stand up today, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you talk to David Van Ash in the lobby today. Uh, he's got a paper, and he can share some things with you. A lot of military service up here right now, and they're going to share the scriptures and our quotes. Kevin just retired from the military, by the way. Oh. All right, scriptures, Romans 13, verse 7. Render, therefore, to all their dues. Tribute to whom tribute is due. Custom to whom custom. Fear to whom fear. Honor to whom honor. John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. John 16, 33. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Jim Longacre, I didn't know he was going to be in town. We thought he was going to be gone this week. So Jim, come up here. He is a present military guy right now, so let's give him a hand. I have a quote here from our second U.S. President, John Adams. I pray heaven bestow the best of blessings on this house and all that shall hereafter inhabit it. May none but honest and wise men ever rule under this roof. Amen. What a prayer, huh? Yeah. Only honest and wise men rule under this roof. Yeah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for our veterans. 
We thank you for their willingness to risk all so that our nation might dwell in peace and safety. May they find the honor and recognition they deserve. In the name of your divine son, we pray that you will heal the physical and psychological wounds yes. some of these veterans have suffered. Yes. Bring peace to those who mourn the loss of their comrades. Yes. Yes. Father, we pray that our nation would learn to respect and acknowledge those that have served their country well. Yes. In Jesus' name. Amen. Just stand in prayer with me at this time. There's a post traumatic stress disorder. Several people this year have uh, called me and talked to me about that, so let's bow our hands for this. Father, right now we bring before you these ones who are suffering from post traumatic stress disorder. Mm -hmm. We're asking, Father God, that you would give them not a spirit of fear, but a power and of love and of a sound mind. Your word says, Thou will keep him in perfect mm -hmm. peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusts in thee. Father God, calm all their fears. Help them to have memories, Father God, of those things which have been a blessing to them in the military. And then, Father God, we're asking you to just comfort and strengthen their families as they walk through this together. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You may be seated. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, David. Amen. I'm going to ask if Jeremy and Rhonda Davis would come, Seth and Destiny Byron, and James and Sarah Gilly. One of the pillars that is falling in the United States of America is the family. The family is falling apart at the seams. We've got to put, through prayer, those pillars back together. One of those are the strengthening of our family unit. So I'm going to ask if uh, Jeremy and Rhonda would share the scriptures. Seth and Destiny will share the quote, and then James and Sarah Kelly will ask God's blessing upon the family. Let's stand at this time. In Genesis 128, it says, And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have domain over, every, over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Amen. Yes. Genesis 2, 24. Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother, and cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And Leviticus 25, 10. And ye shall hallow the fiftieth year, and proclaim liberty throughout all the land, unto all the inhabitants thereof. It shall be a jubilee unto you, and you shall return every man unto his possession, and you shall return every man unto his family. Amen. I do got to say, though, the thing that did strike me on this, if you don't mind, Pastor, um, it said, Therefore shall a man leave his mother and father. A man shall leave his mother and father to his wife and be fruitful and multiply. Man and woman. All right. Uh, numbers 36. <laughs> Six through eight. <laughs> this is the thing which the Lord doth command concerning the daughters of Zelophehad, saying, Let them marry to whom they think is best. Only to the tribe of their father shall they marry, so that not the inheritance of the children of Israel remove from tribe to tribe, for every one of the children of Israel shall keep himself unto the inheritance of the tribe of his fathers. And every daughter that possesseth an inheritance in any tribe of the children of Israel shall be wife to only the family of the tribe of her father, that the children of Israel may enjoy every man the inheritance of his fathers. Amen. Thank you so much, Jeremy Ryan. The year of the Bible was declared in 1983 by joint resolution of the House and Senate. Renewing our knowledge of and faith in God through the Bible can only strengthen us as a nation and a people. Thank you for the, the, the 
guideline of the family. We thank you for what you've given us yes. as far as what a family is. Yes. We thank you for the authority that you've given us as a family over the world. Yes. We yes. thank you for putting this first and foremost upon the world's sight and restoring it to what the world should see as yes. a family. We thank you that you show our young ones what a wife and a husband and children should be. Bless our young ones. We thank you for renewing us and giving us the strength to be bold and to require what a family is. And we thank you for the political, the people in, in political powers to see this and to portray it upon the world so that the world would know and glorify your name yes. as to what a family should be. Yes. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I know as a pastor and others in this church, it is wonderful to know that there are people praying for you on a daily basis. Uh, we have a lady who's 90, Dorothy is 94 years old. Will be 94, and she says, there's not a day goes by I don't pray for the church and for you, Pastor, okay? Uh, she no, no longer can drive, but yes, let's give her a round of applause. <laughs> So these ones that we've chosen to come forward this morning and pray for our church leadership, they have known Joni and I for a lot of years. Uh, let's put it, Ron and I have been boyhood friends since kindergarten. So you figure out how long that is, okay? Uh, that's 60 years right there, okay? You said it out loud. But between uh, these three couples, we've known each other for about 150 years. You put all their years to that. Okay. So if anybody knows Joni and I, they know us very, very well. So I'm going to ask if Rex Bevestella, Rex and Terry, Bevestella, Ron and Blanche Bernard, and Bob and Barb Allen would come. Uh, these are the ones who uh, you can trust have been doing a yeoman's task here at the church through, through the years praying for this church. And I thank the Lord for each and every one of them and for you also for helping us together through your prayers. Could you stand with me now? This is from Proverbs 29, verse 18. Where there is no vision... The people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. From Luke chapter 3, verses 4 through 6. As it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, a voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. Every valley shall be filled in, every mountain and hill made low. The crooked roads shall become straight. Amen. The rough way is smooth, and all people will see God's salvation. Amen. From 1 Timothy 3, 1 through 13. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desires a good work. A bishop then must be blameless. The husband of one wife, vigilant, sober of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach. <coughs> Not given to wine, no striker, not greedy, a filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous. One that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. Likewise, must the deacons be grave, not double-tongued, not given to much wine, not greedy of filthy lucre, holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience. And let these also first be proved, 
Let, then let them use the office of a deacon, being found blameless. Even so, must their wives be grave, not slanderers, sober, faithful in all things. Let the deacons be the husbands of one wife, ruling their children and their own houses well. For they that have used the office of a deacon well, purchase to themselves a good degree and great boldness in the faith, which is in Christ Jesus. This is a quote from John Witherspoon, a signer of the Declaration of Independence. While we give praise to God, the supreme disposer of all events, for his interposition on our behalf, let us guard against the dangerous error of trusting in or boasting of an arm of flesh. If your case is just, if your principles are pure, and if your conduct is prudent, you need not fear the multitude of opposing hosts. Amen. 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 Pray with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask you to raise up persons of vision and purpose in the body of Christ. People of integrity who have the ability to unify and rally the body of Christ at large. May they be godly examples to those whom they shepherd as they pray for your guidance in every facet of their lives. May they have the ability to make your ways plain and clear, inspiring those who hear yes, their sir. words to yes, seek sir. a deep and abiding relationship with you, yes, the Father of all. Thank you. Lord, give our church leaders the voice to speak to the conscience of this nation. May they not be, not only influence the the believers, but may they also influence those who have not yet come to know you as Lord and Savior. Yes. And may they use such words that would inspire and motivate the whole nation. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you so much. Wow. <laughs> wow. Amen. There's a story in the Bible about a king named Ahab, and uh, Ahab was a little afraid to go out into the battle. And so he prays, and he was a godless king, by the way, and he said, who shall begin this battle? And he said, take the youth. Take the youth. Well, we're going to ask the youth would come at this time. The scriptures be shared by Josh Moran, the quote from Reagan Neri. Did I say it right? Yeah, I did, okay. I did okay, right? Okay. That's because my one of my favorite programs is what is it like? Blue Bloods. And Reagan on Blue Blood Jeff. And then Cheyenne Freeman is going to come also and lead us in prayer. Would you guys come at this time? Let's give them a round of applause and thank you. Proverbs 22 6 says train up a child in the way he should go so that when he is older he will not depart from it 2nd Timothy 3 16 through 17 says all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine for reproof correction and instruction in righteousness that student of God may be perfect through thoroughly furnished unto every good work and 1st Timothy 4 12 says don't let anybody look down on you because you are young but set an example for the believers in speech and conduct in love and faith and in purity Amen. 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 this is a quote from the heart of the teacher by Paula J Fox a child's heart is fragile don't break it the child's mind is open don't close it the child's soul is tender don't harden it a child's spirit is joyful, don't crush it. Would we pray now, Shane? Heavenly Father, we just come to you today. Um, and there is so much to pray for as your children, God. 
We just pray that um, as youth, God, that you would set our hearts on fire, Lord. Yes, yes. Set our hearts on fire as um, a generation for you, Lord. Yes, Lord. That we would come yes. to know your heart, God, and that um, everywhere we go, Lord, that uh, it would just be on fire for you, God. That you would uh, set our hearts on fire so much, Lord, that we can't talk to anybody without saying something about you, Lord. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, Father, we pray that you will help our parents and our educa educators to provide us with the special nature, nature and loving atmosphere that will help us discover our gifts mm -hmm. and talents that, and develop them for your glory. Yes. We pray that you will surround us with so much encouragement that no feelings of fear or uncertainty will help us from becoming the joyful, creative young people you desire us to be. Yes. We pray that you will make our classrooms into places where there is delight in learning instead of drudgery or dread. We pray for wisdom and discernment to reign in the hearts of our parents and yes. teachers to safeguard our hearts and minds. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you. I thought I saw Bill Marsak come in. Bill did, did not come in. Okay, Janice, would you come up here for a moment? Yeah. <laughs> You're going to do double duty. I think Bill's counting right now. Oh, uh, let's, let's see who else I can have come up here right now. Okay. Teresa Welch, come on up here right now. I want you to read these three paragraphs one at a time, okay? I always pray for hillbillies, okay? And God loves all and loves hillbillies too, amen? Yes, he does. <laughs> well, one, no, one paragraph in the truth the Lord, read the second. God longs for his people to humble themselves and to seek forgiveness and pray for guidance. God's word says, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. That's in Psalm 33, 12. The Bible commands that we repent of our sins and turn to Almighty God. And because we are confident that we serve a God of mercy and compassion, we know that he stands ready to respond to our cries, cries out of the abundance of his divine wisdom. Franklin Graham was one that is writing these words, and what he's doing is he's setting us up for we as a nation. He's going to these cities, like I said, in August and September, late August or early September, he will be to Detroit, Michigan. And he's asking Christians to rally down there. That our politicians in the state of Michigan, just like politicians in Illinois and at the state levels, will see there's a lot of Christians out there yeah. that are looking for godly leadership. So with those thoughts in mind, I'm going to have him read the remaining. Bill, would you come up? You're going to read a uh, Bill Marsak. Can you come up? You're going, to, you're going to read a paragraph also. And with those thoughts in mind, and then we will pray one more time. Okay, Teresa. It is a crucial time for us to individually and collectively seek God's divine intervention for the challenges facing us. We need to pray not only for our nation, but we need to pray for our leaders, for all those who govern us, that they will turn to God with humble hearts and follow him. Our military leaders need our prayers as we have dedicated men and women serving on battlefields and sacrificing their blood to protect our nation and many innocent people around the world. God is faithful to bless those who turn to him. Bill, the last paragraph here. Pray that as a nation we would return to God. As we call on God, let us do so by genuine faith believing that he hears our prayers. God can heal this great land for which our forefathers fought and died. We need a spiritual renewal. We need a revival in America. And we need each and every one to pray. Amen. Amen. That's crucial. Thank you so much. Amen. We need to do that. Let's stand at this time. You know, it's interesting. I've been following this very closely with uh, Franklin Graham. When they show him praying, there are thousands that are praying with Franklin Graham. But you know who the press is choosing to focus on? The small group of Namba, the small group of 
uh, was named by this North American Men Boy Association. They're focusing on the aberrant behavior, behavioral people. Those are the ones that are getting all the press. Now, the Bible says God looks down from heaven. I want you to know God knows who really is in charge. And guess who it is? I got some news for you. It's not ABC. It's not Dateline America. It is Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And so when you're watching that news, say, that is not true. With God, all things are possible. Let us pray this prayer. Lord, we are thankful for the abundant blessings you have bestowed on America. Our forefathers look to you as protector, provider, and the promise of hope. But we as a people have wandered far from your firm foundation. May we repent for turning our backs on your faithfulness. We pray that this great nation will be restored by your forgiveness from bondage that will grant freedom. Through your own sacrifice, you offer us salvation. From the state of despair, you offer us peace. From the bounties of heaven, you have blessed, not because of our goodness, but as we've already seen today, by your grace. Amen. You have given us freedom to worship you in spirit and in truth, as your holy word instructs us. May our lives as Christians honor you in word and deed. And may our nation acknowledge that all good things come from our Father above. Mm -hmm. Lord, as we approach this year, this National Day of Prayer, Father God, we're asking that all across the United States of America, starting right here in Michigan, Lord, that will, there will be a Christian uprising. I don't mean bullets flying and things like that, but I mean prayers uprising to heaven mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. I pray, Father God, that we would surround our leaders with prayer because your word says, that when the righteous are in authority, the city rejoices. Mm -hmm. Father, if our leaders are doing wrong in your eyes right now, at a state level, we're asking that they would be removed from office. Mm -hmm. And you would bring righteous men and women into those positions you, who will do what's right in your eyes. Yes. Mm -hmm. We pray, Father God, that you would surround our leaders at the village level, the city level, the township level, the county level, and the state level, that you'd surround them with godly counselors. Yes. And Father God, if they refuse to listen to godly counsel, Father, your word declares that the rod and reproof give instruction. And that, Father God, as wisdom comes into our heart, we have a choice to respond to wisdom or not. If they will not respond to the wisdom that is found in your word, remove them from office. Mm -hmm. And bring men and women in their place who will listen to you. Mm -hmm. We pray that their conduct as they are in office, would bring glory and honor mm -hmm. to you. Yes. Father, as we pray to you, we've seen the quotes, and have, these were from presidents, these were from leaders, whether they were literary leaders, whether they were political leaders, whether they were in military, Father, whether they were in any form of leadership, they believed that they had a, a responsibility to live a godly life in front of their constituents. Yes. And we pray that that would take place here in Michigan. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. Father God, we thank you right now that you are in authority. Mm -hmm. And your word says, by you, kings reign. Mm -hmm. Father God, right now we pray a hedge protection around them, around their families, around their children. Yes. We pray that no evil would come nigh their dwelling. Mm -hmm. And we pray, Father God, right now in Jesus' name, that they would have an ear that is tuned and a heart that is tuned to what you're doing in this earth right now. Mm -hmm. Because as was already shared without a vision, my people perish. Father God, give them a vision of what America can be like if we'll walk in the fear of God, in the love of God, and walk in love one towards another. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now I want to say this about the National Day of Prayer. There will be four boards over there. Write down prayer requests that you have. They will be prayed for those 12 hours. As, as you write these requests down, people will be praying for those every hour on the hour. Watch the miraculous thing that, things that God begins to do. Also, there's going to be a luncheon at the New Haven Village office at 12 o'clock. If you want to go there, there's going to be prayer. There'll be a meal, but there'll also be prayer going on. So feel free to come up there. All right? 
At this time, I am going to ask David, or would you and your mom be, you can go in the back and be dismissed there. We're going to have you out there in the foyer, in the lobby. And uh, if you want to talk to David, you can. Uh, he can get the balance, uh, the national debt balanced and everything in the next 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, these little stickers, I'm so sorry. I almost missed that. We are going to have a balloon launch right after church today. So stick around. We're going to let all these balloons go in the air and uh, take pictures. Do all that. Yes, Tony. 